Hello all, this is part two of chapter five, dimensional analysis and similarity. So in the previous chapter, we went over the motivation for performing dimensional analysis, and we reviewed the pi buckingham theorem. In this chapter, we are going to see how actually, uh, how to apply the pi theorem and some other topics. Okay, the acknowledgement as before. Now we are going to look at example 5.2 of the book, which shows how to use the pi theorem. The problem is the problem that we have talked about already before in the previous lecture. We do have a, <clears throat> let's say, a particular body such as a, like a flat plate immersed in a stream of fluid and if we look at the problem we can identify that the important variables are first of all force the drag force which is the which is the variable of interest the dependent variable so we identify the drag force and then we see that the product according to the geometry of the problem it is, it is very thin, so the thickness is not important. We assume that it is very thin. So the picture itself is a little bit misleading. I couldn't find a better one. So L, the length of this shape, represents the geometry of the problem. It's important. The velocity of the stream, the density of the fluid, and the viscosity of the fluid. We, as you see from the shape, we do have a nicely streamlined object. So pressure difference is not important here. The drag is created by friction. Also pay attention that there is no angle of attack. So the plate or the object is horizontal. <clears throat> so there is no horizontal force, or we assume that there is no, sorry, there is no vertical force or the lift force. Okay, so how to apply the pi theorem here? First of all, we see that we do have one, two, three, four, five variables. N is equal to five. Then we go ahead and determine the dimensions of each variable as the table shows. So force is F is equal to MA. M is the mass. So mass it has the dimension M. And then acceleration has the dimension length over time squared. So we show the dimensions of F, force. Dimension of L, dimension of U, the velocity. So this V is the same as U here. So I got them from different sources. So this U is actually V, the velocity. Rho, the density, and mu, the viscosity. So in order to determine the dimension of viscosity, we know that the unit of viscosity is kilogram per meter per second square per second sorry so that's why we can have the dimensions of the viscosity <coughs> so if you are not sure we can go ahead and check the units of each of these variables and then determine their dimensions so in this problem we do have three fundamental dimensions M, L, and T, mass, length, and time. Sometimes instead of mass, length, time, we can go ahead and use force, length, and time, like in the next question. So we do have three uh, fundamental dimensions. So J is equal to three. We choose, it's sort of arbitrary and also depends on the experience or maybe trial and error. So in this problem, we use three parameters, length, L, U, T, 
three variables L the length of the object the velocity u and the density rho <clears throat> as repeating variables then these repeating variables should be combined so we have chosen three of them then two other variables are left out so these three repeating variables are supposed to be combined with each of those two other variables in order to create two dimensionless groups so then it means that we need to check to make sure that these repeating variables here so these three repeating variables actually do not by themselves make a dimensionless group because if they already make a dimensionless group then we cannot combine them with an additional variable in order to create a dimensionless group so we if we combine them we see that no there is no way that they can make a dimensionless group the reason is that if you look at them one is length one is velocity one is density density has kilogram in it mass the other two don't have it so this combination of these three variables for sure is is dimensional all right so now according to the pi theorem k the number of dimensionless groups is equal to n the number of the variables minus j the number of available dimensions so therefore k is equal to 2 so we expect to have two pi groups in the previous lecture we actually showed those two pi groups but now we want to obtain those two groups based on the pi theorem so the next step is what is to combine these three repeating variables so these three repeating variables will be repeated in both of those two pi groups so once we need to combine these three with f to find pi one and then we need to combine LU rho with uh, viscosity in order to find pi 2. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so for first pi 1, we use LU rho as the repeating variables and then combine it with F. We raise them to power A, B, and C respectively. and then because it's going to create a non-dimensional group therefore the end result should be put equal to m for mass to the power of zero l for length to the power of zero t for the time to the power of zero this m to the power zero l to the zero t to the zero is non-dimensional because it's been raised to the power of zero it's equal to one so this means so what we have done here this means that this pi one is non-dimensional so we do have three unknowns a b and c and uh, for f we assumed f to the power of one it could be to the raised to the any power but it's usually we raise it to the power of one or minus one for the reason that you will probably know this or I will ex mention later so then we need to show each of these three variables L U and Rho in terms of their fundamental uh, dimensions so L to the A then U is meter per second L T to the 1 to the power of B and then the density kilogram per cubic meter ml to the negative 3 raised to the power of c so this abc has to be found in such a way that eventually this pi 1 has no will have no dimensions so it means that here for l is raised to the power of a and then l is raised to the power of b 
and then L is raised to the power of minus 3C and finally L is raised to the power of 1 so A plus B minus 3C plus 1 is equal to 0 a 0 is on the right side because L is raised to the power of 0 so we could go ahead and do the same thing for the mass and also for the time so for the time you see that there is one time here T to the power of minus B that's the minus B the second one well the second term uh, this is that was for the second term and the third one the force for the time we don't have time in it sorry this is the set the third one is for the density there is no time in it and then for the force we do have t to the minus 2 so minus b minus 2 is equal to 0 now we do have a system of equations we need to solve it so we see that b is equal to minus 2 and then c is equal to minus 1 and then we can go ahead and find a so a b c is found for this dimensionless group therefore pi 1 can be <coughs> found now l to the minus 2 from here and u and rho and f so if we bring these three terms l u and rho to the denominator we will see that f over rho u squared l squared is equal to this is then our non-dimensional group so we can call it cf the friction factor it's a drag force based on friction only so friction drag factor or friction drag coefficient so it's a non-dimensional group all right nice so this is the first uh, non-dimensional group all right so now we go ahead and combine the repeating variables uh, with there with the other you know existing variable which is mu so the viscosity was not used before so we need to go ahead and combine viscosity with the repeating variables which was length velocity and density in this problem so again we raise them to the power of a b c that we need to find so for mu the viscosity we can give it power of 1 or negative 1 so in this particular case you know we have given it negative 1 because we actually know that we are going to generate Reynolds number and in the Reynolds number viscosity is in the uh, denominator if we give it plus 1 it's fine but then we will obtain reciprocal of the Reynolds number which then we would need to flip it it's fine so you could give it plus one or negative one you would find different numbers for a b and c but you would get the same fundamental uh, or dimensionless number the same pi two all right so i hope that it's clear enough <clears throat> so now we raise l to a and then u we convert it to the uh, fundamental dimensions raised to b and for all of them and put it equal to m to the power of 0 l to 0 t to 0 now if we go ahead and do the same process as before the one that we did for <clears throat> for uh, for the force we end up with this system of algebraic equations so let me just do it for the time so review it with you for the time so if you look at this you see that you do have one time here in the velocity minus one times b it's minus b and then the next term there is no time and then the last term which is the viscosity there is time t to the negative one to the negative one so this is two t to the one therefore minus b plus 1 is equal to 0 so b is equal to 1 and then c is equal to 1 and then a is found also equal to 1 <clears throat> as a result pi 2 the second fundamental number 
is now L to the 1, U the velocity to the power of 1, rho to the 1, and mu to the negative 1. Or rho U L divided by mu. That's our second dimensionless number. But when you look carefully, rho U L over mu, so we know that, oh, we called this Reynolds number before. So if you had given mu a power of 1, then you would end up with a equal to b equal to c equal to negative 1. Believe me, if you do this, you will get this. And then your non-dimensional number pi 2 would be mu over rho ul or reciprocal of Reynolds number, the same as Reynolds number. So when, because it's dimensionless, it really doesn't matter if you flip it, if you, you know, inverse it or so on and so forth. So finally, what's the result of this dimensional analysis process? F over rho u squared L squared, the friction coefficient, friction drag coefficient, is a function of rho u L over mu or the Reynolds number. This is what we actually showed at the beginning of this lecture, but now systematically we obtained it. So this problem had been simplified. We don't have the effect of pressure. This is just a problem which is governed by skin friction. That's why the drag coefficient is only a function of Reynolds number. There was also no angle of attack. So it was just a very simple, you know, a straightforward problem just to demonstrate how to use this process. <clears throat> All right, so now let's look at another example, example 5.3. In this example, we will look at the pump. The power input P to a centrifugal pump is a function of the volume flow rate Q, impeller diameter D, rotational speed RPM like omega, and the density rho and viscosity of the fluid. <coughs> so, the problem has actually made it easier for us. It already says what are the important parameters. P, which is the power input. So that would be the power input, the power input from the electric motor. is a function of the flow rate, diameter of the pump, uh, rotational speed, RPM of the pump, and density and viscosity of the fluid, for instance, water. Is there any other important parameter? Not really. So is temperature important here? No, because temperature doesn't change significantly. Do we need to consider surface tension here? Not really, because there is no free surface flow. Gravity is not important here, because there is no like free surface flow again. <coughs> So these are the important parameters. So we want to rewrite this as a dimensionless relation, ship. So hint, use omega, rho, and d as repeating variables. So there are three independent dimensions in this problem. So we need to use three repeating parameters because there are one, two, three, four, five, six, then oftentimes it's up to us or it's based on experience how to choose the repeating parameters. So in this problem, in order to come up with a standard solution, the problem suggests to use omega, rho, and d as repeating variables. <coughs> okay, so that makes our life easier. So now we're going to use the pi theorem. So first we count the variables, n is equal to 6. Then we show each variable in terms of the fundamental dimensions. In this particular case, instead of the system MLT theta, we're going to use the system FLT theta. Instead of mass, we assume that force is the fundamental dimension. Why? This is the way that this example has used it. So we can actually, in the imperial units, 
the dimension the force is considered as a as a you know as a fundamental dimension so it's fine so it is not going to affect you know our solution so instead of mlt theta in this problem we use f the fundamental dimension for force lt theta it's actually a good it's actually good because it helps us understand you know what's going on <clears throat> all right so then we have the power input p So power, so how, what are the fundamental dimensions for power? Power is equivalent to force times velocity. F power P is equal to FV, or it's equal to torque omega, if you remember from dynamics. So therefore, the fundamental dimensions of power is force times velocity, and velocity is meter per second, LT to the negative one. So same for other properties, for instance, rotational speed, uh, omega, the unit on dimensions of omega is <coughs> like revolutions per second or radians per second. So the unit is one over time. So T to the negative one. Same for other properties. Q, for instance, the flow rate is cubic meter per second. So L is L cubic L, L to the power of 3, T to the negative 1. Okay, so the repeating proper repeating variables here, problem asks us to use omega rho and D. So we do have G, J equal to 3. And we check that to make sure that these three repeating variables that we have used, we check to make sure that these three variables do not make a dimension less parameter themselves. Because we want to use these three repeating variables, combine them with the other three, and come up with three other dimensionless uh, parameters, pi 1, pi 2, and pi 3. So these three together, if you raise them to the power of a, b, and c, so see what happens. So if you raise it to the power of a, b, and c, and put it equal to f to the power of 0, l to 0, t to 0, we will see that this is possible only if a is equal to b equal to c equal to 0. So what does it mean? It means that these three variables together do not make a dimensionless parameter, a dimensionless number. So we are good. We can use these three as the repeating uh, parameters. All right. <clears throat> so n is equal to 6, j is equal to 3, n minus j is equal to 3. Therefore, we will have three non-dimensional numbers to find. So we need to find pi 1, pi 2, pi 3 with omega, rho, and d as repeating parameters. We use them, raise them to the power of a, b, c. For pi 1, let's combine it with p. Then if we break them down into their fundamental dimensions and put it equal to f to the power of 0, l0, t0, then we can go ahead and find a, b, and c. So we form a system of algebraic equations for the three fundamental dimensions, F, the force, length, and the time. And if we solve it, we get A, B, and C. So once we find A, B, and C, we substitute it here for pi 1. And we see that pi 1 is equal to this number. Combined with P, the in the input power this p is not pressure this is input power so it turns out that this non-dimensional number is p divided by this uh, numbers these variables and we call it cp this is like the power coefficient of the pump 
This is a non-dimensional number, the first one that we found. This is the coefficient of power of the pump. So in other words, we have non-dimensionalized the power input of the pump using this variables rho, omega, and d raised to the correct to the right powers in order to make it dimensionless. The next step is to find pi 2 and this time we're going to go ahead and use uh, Q, the flow rate, uh, in order to find a dimensionless number for Q, the flow rate. So again, we form pi 2 omega rho d raised to the power of ABC and then combine it with Q, the second uh, variable that we are interested in. So the same thing we form algebraic a system of algebraic equations for a, b, and c, and it turns out that a is equal to minus one, b is zero, and c minus three. The details is not shown here. You can go ahead and form the system of equations and find a, b, and c. So if, as a result, pi two is equal to gamma to the power of a, which is minus one rho to the power of b which is zero so in fact rho has no effect here rho will be eliminated and then d to the minus c or minus three and then q as a result pi 2 is equal to q over pi d to the power of three and we call this c sub q the flow rate coefficient or the discharge coefficient of the pump, flow rate coefficient C sub Q. And finally, there is one last variable which is left, and that's viscosity. We combine viscosity with the repeating, repeating variables again, raise them to the power of ABC, find them by forming another you know, uh, system of algebraic equations, and it, end, it turns out that pi 3 is equal to mu, the viscosity over rho omega d squared. So you see that this is very similar to the Reynolds number. How and why? Because mu is the viscosity and rho is the density, omega d squared. So if you separate one of these characteristics length d and combine it with omega so omega d is the velocity let's say at the tip of the impeller so this is the impeller of the pump omega d is the velocity at the tip of the impeller so we end up having mu over rho a velocity v times d so this is the reciprocal of the Reynolds number actually in the pump <clears throat> So we end up, that's the end of this problem. So pi one, the non-dimensional number for the power is a function of the non-dimensional parameter for the flow rate and non-dimensional parameter for viscosity, which is actually a sort of Reynolds number. So that's it. So you see that in the, at the beginning, the input power was a function of six different variables. Now you see that the input power in the non-dimensional form is only a function of two power parameters, two variables. And these two variables are dimensionless. So this simplifies the, the problem a lot. <clears throat> so one more thing. So another application of the uh, dimensional analysis is actually to make the fundamental or governing equations dimensionless. So you may not see this a lot in undergraduate uh, fluid mechanics, but we will briefly talk about it. So first of all, let's write the continuity equation, which is delta V equal to zero for a uh, for an incompressible flow equal to zero, delta V. 
and also the Navier-Stokes equation, the second equation. So these equations are dimensional. It does have the dimension of, for instance, these are like you do have del P, it, is, it does have dimensions, pressure over length, that's the dimension, rho G and so on. And we know that all of them have the same dimensions. Each term in the Navier-Stokes equation has the same dimension. And the dimension is like the dimension of the force over the dimension of the volume, each of these terms. So if we want to make them dimensionless, we need to use some reference length in the problem. For instance, a reference length L. Let's say you are writing this equation for flow over a flat plate or if it's flow over a flat plate, that dimensionless length would be the length of the plate. If it's flow over a sphere, that length would be the diameter of the sphere. So it's a characteristic length, let's call it L. And we consider a reference velocity U. This could be like flow far from the object. So if you do consider flow over a sphere, far from the sphere, the flow would be kind of uniform, right? That would be the reference velocity. So with these two, we can go ahead and make the governing equations dimensionless. So for this, we can have, we can define a dimensionless velocity. So our velocity in the problem over U, the reference velocity, now it is dimensionless. Del, which has unit of, del is like gradient, its unit is one over length. So, uh, So if we want to go ahead and make it dimensionless, so this is, I'm not sure about this because, so let's go back to the, to how to make del dimensionless. So for X, we divide it by L, characteristic length for X, Y, and Z in order to have x star, y star, and z star, these are dimensionless. And the time we can make, we can have a dimensionless time, t star, and we can have a dimensionless pressure. So now if we go ahead and substitute, so for instance, in the previous slide, we had del dot v. If instead of v, we use v star u, and with all other dimensionless, uh, parameters, we will end up with this equation in this form, which is dimensionless now, del star dot v star equal to zero, and then the Navier-Stokes equation is becoming dimensionless. <clears throat> and what you see here, a term has been generated, which is before like the the Laplacian of the velocity, as you see, this is reciprocal of the Reynolds number. So the Navier-Stokes equation in the dimensionless form, there is no density anymore, there is no viscosity separately anymore. So we do have derivative of velocity, which is acceleration, gradient of pressure, and then we have generated a non-dimensional term, which is Reynolds number. So this is a, a, a convenient way of convenient form of the uh, <clears throat> Navier-Stokes equation. So when we solve this Navier-Stokes equation, it is valid uh, for, I mean, for the same, let's say we solve it for one Reynolds number. So this is good for any problem with that same Reynolds number. We can also go ahead and perform some other analysis, for instance, if we let the Reynolds number approach zero or infinity, then the equation can be simplified accordingly. <clears throat> okay. 
Okay, so let's continue. In the previous slide, there was a typo. Uh, del, del star is equal to L times del because the dimension of del is actually 1 over L. Del is derivative with respect to x, y, and z. So if you multiply del by another length scale, it becomes del star and dimensionless. So there was a typo in the previous slide. So now let's move on to the next topic, some of the non-dimensional parameters and some non-dimensional numbers. The most important one in fluid mechanics is actually the Reynolds number. So rho u l over mu that we have had it, you know, multiple times. So there is another, so Reynolds number is uh, <clears throat> the ratio of the inertia force to the viscous force. We do have it in the uh, next couple of slides. There is another parameter, Euler number. It's important when uh, it's rarely important unless the pressure drops low enough to cause vapor formation or cavitation. For instance, in the case of cavitation in pumps, it may be important. In the previous example that we did for the pumps, so we did not consider pressure because we wanted to develop a general equation. There is another number is fruit number. It's dominant effect in free surface flows. If we do have a free surface flow, for instance, we are analyzing the motion of a ship, free surface. Then the effect of free surface is important and gravity, gravitational waves, when we do have waves created as a result of gravity, like ocean waves. Fruit number is important. Mach number, we have seen it in the previous chapters. Mach number is the velocity of the object divided by the speed of sound in that medium. It's important for like high speed processes, aircraft, supersonic, you know, flows and so on. So it's important when the Mach number is, so you remember that we said that the flow of the fluid may be considered incompressible if Mach number is less than 0 0.3. So for flows with Mach number less than 30%, Mach number is actually not important because we can assume that the flow remains incompressible. So this table shows and lists important non-dimensional numbers. One is Raynor's number ratio of inertia to viscosity, it's almost always important. Mach number is important for compressible flows, is flow speed over speed of sound. Fruit number is the ratio of the inertia force to gravity force, it's important for ocean waves. Weber number, well, it's important when you have a free surface flow and where surface tension is important. When you have, like, let's say, droplets impacting on the surface, that's inertia over surface tension. It's not important in undergraduate fluid mechanics. Rossby number I never heard of. That's for geophysical flows related to environmental. Cavitation and Euler number the ratio of pressure forces to inertia. Prandtl number, you will see it in heat transfer. It's dissipation over conduction. Eckert number, also important in heat transfer, some particular part of heat transfer, so not in this course. Some other parameters, I will skip some of them. So a specific heat ratio, you have seen it in thermodynamics, CP over CV. Roughness ratio is important. We will see it in the future chapters. The ratio of the roughness of a tube, for instance, divided by the, let's say, diameter of the tube. Grashoff number, Rayleigh number are important in heat transfer. Drag coefficient. And uh, it's like the ratio of a drag force divided by this term. That's important. We will see it in the future chapters. It is also similar to what we found in this chapter for 
friction drag coefficient and uh, so on so these are like some of the important non-dimensional numbers all of them or most of them do have an important physical meaning so uh, we need to understand for instance drainers number is the ratio of uh, inertia force divided by the uh, viscous forces so if the Reynolds number is very large then we can say that inertia of force in the flow is much larger than viscous effects or if Reynolds number is very small we can say that the flow is dominated by the viscous effects so inertia is negligible so these non-dimensional numbers they do have important physical meanings all right so this brings us to the end of this long lecture part two of chapter five thank you for your attention